Hi, I'm Leonson Lewis, former Trinidad and Tobago national football player, and you're watching Feel of Dreams on Axe Television Network. Welcome to another edition. This is Field of Dreams on Axe Television Network. My name is Steve David and I'm your host. And join me today on the set, I have two special guests. And to my left, Narada Wilson. And Narada, um, you have been with us for a couple of times here and there. Yeah. Um, still, let the people know who you are and what you do. Okay, um, well, Narada Wilson, um, sports executive of the company TBL Sports Management. I'm also a football agent that represents over quite a few athletes, both internationally and locally. I'm here to lend my expertise once again on the program Field of Dreams. In addition to Narada, I've got a very special, special guest, the CEO of the Trinidad and Tobago Professional League, uh, Dexter Skeen. Dexter, welcome aboard and Introduce yourself to our... It's a pleasure to be here. Um, good day to all of the fans of Axe Station. Um, you know, it's first time here um, with you guys. So, you know, um, as I said, it's a pleasure to be here, you know, and to contribute and to be I'm part of the, of the action, as I say. Good. We're certainly glad to have you. Yeah. Um, and again, viewers, you know, this is... Field of Dreams, and we talk football and football only. And we wanted to introduce you to the professional league um, and where we're going. And, and I know it's been a while, and we had some of our struggles, and we're trying to make this right. So I invited Dexter so we can talk about some of the challenges or opportunities that we may have that we can, we can move forward with this. Dexter, let me ask you. Um, it's been 14, 15 years, I think, yeah, um, the prof or more that the professional league is running. It's 2002 and that the TT Pro League in its present form has, has been in existence. If you want to look at professional football overall, 1998 was when Jack Warner started the PFL and um, he pulled out in 2001. And the owners of the other clubs, they decided to continue. And as I said, we are here. Uh, since 2002 with the TT Pro League. It seems as though, um, to me, it's like every year, like we're starting over again, like we're not, well, not starting over, but we get to a point that we're not moving. And what do you think could be the problem? I would beg to differ um, okay. in terms of your, that um, analysis. Um, if you look at the league where it was in 2002, we had one sponsor that was uh, for citizens, thanks to them. And they're still with us at this point. They have increased the sponsorship. Um, we have gotten Toyota as well on board. They have been with us for several years. We have Digital, not only sponsoring a knockout tournament, but they are also a league sponsor, which is a first as well. They have upped the ante this year, and they have uh, brought one million worth of sponsorship on the table for the league competition. Um, as well, they are looking at the broadcast rights. So that is something that, as well, the, the league is developing. You have, as well, other sponsors, Lucas State Sport, they have a knockout tournament as well. You have Fan Club, you have Malta Carib just sponsoring the youth league, right? Um, when the league just started, there was no youth competition. Now you have 13, 15, 17, you have a reserve league, and you have the senior division. Um, you have a league office, which was just when I came in, we had two people 
now you have a media department, you have websites, you have an accounts department, you have marketing, you have several committees in place, the disciplinary committee, you have the player status committee. And the league is developing day by day. Um, you have 10 clubs, uh, Club Sando came in. What is happening, you see, people have, people have to understand the, the, the product life cycle of a professional league. When you look at the premiership, for instance, the, the Barclays premiership, which everybody adores and watches day in, day out, they've been in existence how long? Over 100 years. I was reading an article recently. In 2001, how many clubs do you think was profitable in the premiership? 80, let, me, let me help you. 80% were not profitable. Well, I agree with you. I the, know the, that. the ITV uh, television contract it fell apart. 80% of the clubs had losses. And it's only recently that with the windfall in terms of the television rights, then you, you, you started having uh, the, 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 the profits and so on of the clubs. In addition, the MLS, after 15 years, they spent one billion TT before they started getting profits. The league to date has spent the owners and to their credit, they have spent 350 million. The government has only spent 50 million and you have sponsorship less than that. So we have to understand that this thing is a young league. It is a new business, just like any other business. It's an industry, a new industry. And it, it will take time to develop. You, you're talking and we were talking 2002 to 2015, that's 13 years, but right? My statement was mm -hmm. not, um, and I, I agree with you with the development was pretty much more on, on the teams, struggles, the crowds not coming out, and, and this is what we're trying but, to but do. But that's, that's what I was saying in a context. It yeah. takes time to do. You, you have to it start does. from the ground yeah. up. You have to understand the environment we're in. Trinidadians have not had a history of sporting, uh, a culture of, of supporting uh, sport. We like the event type scenario. From our surveys, when I came in, uh, Mr. Larry Roman, the chairman and myself, in terms of surveys being done, when, when, when we received the, the results from these surveys, it came back that people love an event type situation where you have like a knockout tournament, a quick result, you have entertainment, you have giveaways, they like, some, that, that's the kind of action that they like. They, they were averse to the more long-term league competition and going there and supporting this league, this team day in, day out. So that's why we started these four knockout competitions to transform that type of supporter to more long-term. Mm -hmm. um, critical to that process, however, is the development of fields within the communities. So until that takes place, you're going to have difficulty, which is what you're talking about with fans coming in. You, you, you have to create an emotive link with the fans. That's the model all over the world. It's no different here, right? So until you have fans who can consider, for instance, point 14, which has the, the correct model in place, I, I feel right in the midst of the city that is easily accessible, transport is coming there, right? And um, they, can see, they can feel a part of this, a part ownership of this team. You're going to have issues. And even then, you're going to have to train the fans because even if you watch us support the national team, we don't understand how to support, right? right? The recently the CONCACAF club championship. You had 10 people from Guatemala and they made more noise than the hundreds that were there because they understand that they need to keep shouting, keep singing, they have club songs, they have their chants and so on. And they keep the noise going, the noise level going and they understand how to support. We need to train this into our fans. We need to train our clubs as well to get that, that have that community development plan as well, have welfare activities, youth activities with the community as well, so that they then start to see the clubs reaching out to the communities and then they will then buy back in. So our players need to be schooled in that as well. Our players at this point have not reached the stage and no fault of theirs because we as the leaders need to expose them to that from young and develop them in that manner to, for them to understand that they are the assets, they are the brand ambassadors and they need to go out there and be the faces for the clubs. So until we start doing that, then not only then will we see that, that, that multiplier effect taking place, but it's, 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 it's a process. We have to be patient and we have to understand where we are. We have to understand that we are growing, we are developing and we have to then uh, put things in place, continue 
to tighten the screws and to, and to, to re-engineer the process and ensure that we keep improving and we keep getting the type of personnel and the type of right, the right people that to come into professional football who have a business mind, who understand what business is about and not just football. Before we had only people who understood the sporting objectives. Football is a different type thing and, and it's different to business too because businessmen see only profit. We in football see sporting, we want to mean we want to win as well as we want to make a profit. So it's a, it's, it's a, uh, a subtle combination where we have to understand how we're going to marry those two uh, objectives and still keep the clubs afloat, keep the business, the industry profitable and are still at the same time reach out to community, reach out to fans and develop community. Let me bring Narada in a little bit because Narada, you've been out there in Brazil and lots of other parts of the world with, where it's <laughs> where humongous. It <laughs> so maybe you can give us some, some um, your, your I think, insight. You know, firstly, I would agree that the league is pretty young. I think the, the downside to it is that the league was born in the 21st century where you have access to everything and everybody has access to information and the thing they know. So just as you rightfully said, some of the leagues in Europe are over 100 years, but they were in times when the information wasn't easily accessible, so we don't know the history and what they went through. Today, everybody has a degree, everybody has a master's, everybody knows business, so they tend to think that, you know, everything should be where, where we want it to be in the initial stages, but it can't be there. 15 years or 13 years in a league, um, it means that there's only probably one generation of footballers that actually lived their entire life through the league. So we have people like, for example, um, uh, uh, Jao or Renal Carrington, who were guys that played in the Pro League when a group of players were the age of 10. I could use myself. I was 10, 11 when these guys are. Now I'm seeing these guys mm -hmm. coaching, and they're still not the face of... They are supposed to be legends. So we still haven't taught the younger players that these should be the guys that we look to emulate mm -hmm. to actually show them that there is some sort of viable lifestyle in the Pro League. We tend to still have the mindset that the Pro League isn't building careers. There are guys building houses, buying cars, based on the Pro League, right? So until the fans see this, then they would come out. Because the, thing, the funny thing about Trinidadian, just as we say in their event supporters, we only support when we think a particular lifestyle or a particular type of living come to the person. Cricket and T20 is doing pretty well because we think the Pollard and the Bravo, we see a particular image behind these guys, whether it be very intelligent because they have education or they were successful or whatever, or monetary attainments. So we know Bravo drives X vehicle, he travels the world, but we don't see it for the Pro League yet. We have not made people aware that some of the guys that are actually in the Pro League have made five, six figures abroad. You know, they're back home, they live pretty okay lifestyles. So we tend to think that it's something that is just helping a group of people that we don't consider to be something prominent in the country. It's a sad thing, but the media has a lot to do with it. Until we constantly push that these guys are actually doing something that we see abroad being done. Because in Brazil, the goal is that you want to become a footballer because you see a particular way out of a particular lifestyle. So you could take care of your parents, or you be, could become more well-educated, you could travel the world. But we don't see that, or the average Trinbegonian at the age of 12, or a senior citizen, a woman at the age of 90, may not think that that is what the Pro League could do for some of these players. Yet we have players who have traveled to four or five countries playing football. We've had players who attained the, the Pro League right now. I'm positive Mr. Skeen could confirm this. In 2002 or 98 or whenever it started, the, whether we look at the Professional League or the TT Pro League, it was just persons involved in football are wrong. Now we have physiotherapists, we have coaches with qualifications, master's degrees, whatever you want to call. You have, you know, you have massage, you know, masseuse. You have everything as any other professional league with qualification. So now we're seeing, we're seeing guys attaining scholarships and coming back home. So now they get a scholarship, they go abroad, they play for four years, and then they come back home and could make a starting salary as any other job, right? So I think those are the things we have to promote in order for people to actually see the direction the league is going. Dexter, mm -hmm. don't you think we need a marquee player or players like every other league in the world to make to jumpstart this thing? to get the fans out. I, I am concerned with getting the fans yeah. out and getting the best players in the field. That, 
that, that would definitely help. Um, <clears throat> again, you always want to be strategic. Yeah. Let's, let's look at business. Let's look at the marketing mix. You have okay. your product, you have your price, you mm -hmm. have your place, and you have promotion. So you t you're talking about the product, enhancing the product by bringing these marquee players, and you put them onto the pitch. Great. Um, but if you leave the, f the, the state, leave them to play only in the stadium, away from the crowds, and you don't have the right place well, yeah. that, that, that's there, then yeah. you're going to run into problems. Mm -hmm. If you don't have the right promotion strategy, mm -hmm. you're going to run into problems, right? Um, it has to be that everything has to come into alignment. Um, as I said, everybody thinks it's a quick fix. You need mm -hmm. to do just one or, or two things, but it's regardless to what you do, it's going to take a while. Even with the cricket that Narada was speaking about, I challenge you that if you were to play that cricket for 10 months in Trinidad, let's see what the crowd is going to be like after a month or two. Yeah. Yeah? I agree. I agree. If you have only Trinidadians playing or Caribbean people alone playing in that, and don't bring the foreigners, the, the big foreigners from abroad, which is where, where you're hitting at, same, you're going to have the same, it's going to be the same story. So mm. it has to be that everything together with your players, you put the thing in the, in, the, in the communities, you start to train your communities, you start to train your players to understand their role and function, and you have the proper leaders at the clubs and, and in football as well. Then, after a period of time, then you're going to start to see the benefits. But you're, going to have, you're going to have to be patient. Let me tell you why I say this. I say yeah. this because mm -hmm. um, it looked like our league and ours because I am part yeah, of this league. Of Our league, mm -hmm. it looked like we are just developing players to export. And, and so many times they get half, half decent, we export them, we make money on them, but they're not staying here. So now we like always in the building mode because the players that half decent, they leave us and they go outside. So. And nothing is wrong with that to me. Nothing is wrong with that to me. Nothing is wrong with that to me in the stage that we had. Some leagues are developmental. Some leagues, are, um, in terms of have the marquee players, like in, in uh, the Premiership. If you look at the, the Italian league um, and some of the other leagues in Europe, players, as soon as they reach a certain level, they go to the Spanish league. Right, the or the premiership. Leagues. So yeah. they as well, a lot of them are uh, building leagues or uh, the leagues that use a stepping stone. Dutch is a right? good example. Developmental like leagues. The Dutch league is, yeah. that is their purpose. Even the Brazilian league, uh, for, you, you have players leaving, right, and going. Um, what we need to do is we need to have, I think, just like the MLS did, you have a certain, you keep a certain type uh, position for one or two marquee players, okay. right? But there's nothing wrong with selling up it. That's part of the business model. For instance, W Connection, that's their business model. They utilize that aspect of the, the, the profit and loss in terms of the transfers to get revenue. So it, has, it, it just has to be a balance. So, so I, wouldn't, I wouldn't say that it's something wrong with players going. It just has, we have to understand that we need to have the one balance. or two market players. So yeah, with a balance, balance involved. Who do we have here in our league? And you can help me. Yeah that could bring people out to see them play? It Who is the Gali Cummins? Who is the yeah. Warren Archibald? Who is the Leroy Dalian of this league? After a couple of years, you'll begin to see that when we start having the, some of the older players, like the, the Kenwin Joneses and so on, as they start to look at be in, in, the, in the maturity stage of their, their product life cycle, then we're going to possibly look at bringing back those type of players as the community ground start to develop and you start to get the model in place and you start to generate some revenue, then you can have the wherewithal financially to bring those type of players here. So again, it's, it's, a, it's, it's in it's terms of, it is a planning process and, patient, you, and you, have right? to, you have to be patient. put things in place in order to be able to um, achieve that specific objective. All right, we would, mm -hmm. when we return, I would bring Murad, Narada into this conversation yeah. and tell me who is our market player and who is he going to bring back to our, our country. <laughs>
to make the building three. We'll be right back after the show. Worldwide Safety Consultants Limited offers solutions to your immediate and future potential problem areas. By providing you with a qualified team of safety consultants, Worldwide Safety Consultants Limited, building a reputation on quality and value since 1999. Located 23 Todd Street, San Fernando, Trinidad. Phone 868-657-1534 or 868-788-6955. Worldwide Safety at Yahoo.com. Okay, welcome back, viewers. Um, you're watching Feel of Dreams and Axe Television Network. Before the break, we were talking about the movement of player in one direction. That means they were moving out from our league into and making other leagues better and I was saying I don't think we we get in enough coming back our way I'm gonna bring Narada in too because Narada is one of the guys who take players and export them outside there so Narada tell me what you think about the movement of players and does that help our league or does that weaken it um, all right my view on it is that um Today we're seeing players moving to better markets. Let me put it that way. Um, there was a time we had our players going to some of the top clubs in Europe, which always depends on the ranking of the country. Then we had a, what I would consider somewhat of a drop. Financially, it's still okay, mm -hmm. but we started to see them go into other areas, Far East Asia, which me personally, I don't have a problem with it because I believe every experience is always a good experience. Some of these guys, the Europe lifestyle is not always the best, and going to a country like Asia, it could be better financially, maybe more crowds, because the thing with Asia is it's all about mass population. Um, now we're seeing a lot of our national team players starting to get back into the MLS and places that are a bit closer to us, so it's easy to bring them home for top games. In terms of marquee players or top players in our country, I still believe um, Trinidad is not 100% aware or understand it yet, unless it's a player, I'm just going to use the name of Ronaldinho coming to this country, even if the player is still top class, we don't run behind it. I don't know if it's a fault of the clubs not marketing it to the best, but I would give an example of I brought the first first, the first first division Brazilian player that I had with a professional club in Trinidad. This was the player that was playing against Neymar and every other national player on Brazil team you could think about. Came here for six months, did what he had to do, one, two or three titles, decent salary, but I don't think anybody ran him down at the end of the games to compliment him or anything like that. He went back to Brazil, he just played 100 games with his team and still considered one of the best players in Brazil. So, so from that aspect, I could say that doesn't only attract our crowds, right? I think what has to happen, maybe it's an idea, is that if we have 10 clubs in the Pro League, at some stage, each club has to decide we want one marquee player at our club, right? Doesn't have to be the highest, but a decent enough player that people could come out and see and the players around him could learn something from him. Now they're going to bounce into financially, how do we support that? And I'll give one other idea. Eventually, there will come a time when each club will have a ground. And when they have the ground for the club, the club is going to get the supporters to bank certain things at these grounds. And I gave an idea once to a committee. In the stadium, one of the stadia in England, each brick has one of the fans named there. So you purchase a brick to help construct the stadium. So let's say the brick is $100. You and I know a brick actually costs about 5 to $10. But it's 100 which means that's an extra $90 that you're actually getting to just <laughs> sign your name on a brick, which would contribute to building the stadium because the stadium mm. needs how much thousands of bricks. That money that they get could pay a particular player. In Brazil, the club Santa Cruz raised their ticket prices by $10 in order to pay a salary for a top player that they wanted. So each ticket purchase you knew, for example, 5 TT or 10 TT on the ticket price was going to your club contributing to pay the salary for a particular player. 
So there are ideas. I think what we need is to have the means to support these ideas, mm -hmm. right? And I think one of the biggest challenges would be a home ground. Because having a marquee player in a random stadium that, you know, the people don't feel involved with him, it, it, doing two walks in his community is not going to get them, it's not going to buy nine months of support. You know, it may buy one game, but that's about it. So I really think we, we need to just get the means to keep the people to have programs for a particular period of time. So, Dexter, um, getting the player is one, but marketing the player, which we don't do a very good job at here, is probably another issue in itself. Well, the, the, again, marketing. I mean, that's a, that's a buzzword. Everybody loves to say marketing. What is marketing? Marketing, as I just, as I just mentioned uh, in our last discussion, it's, you, have, you have your marketing mix. So the, the best ma form of marketing is your product. If you have a good product, word of mouth, if everybody understands it's a great product, people will come to it. So it is about building the standard of play. It is about, and that goes into coach and player development, yeah? which is another issue totally. So it is about uh, putting this product in the right place. Again, we said in the communities. And then we start to talk about promotion. And then we start to talk about pricing and strategies in that area. So it is a myriad of things that has to come into place. Um, I agree with you. And it has to have your proper marketing. I agree with Narada. You had lots of ideas. I've had, a, I've had a million ideas in the office sitting there, um, but I understand where, when, where we at. I understand where the, the pity, the whole pity. Uh, I am fortunate to be in that position. Um, let me give you an example. When we just started the knockout competitions, we threw a lot of marketing dollars into mm -hmm. the advertising, the giveaways, the promotion, and people came. We had like 5,000, 6,000 at the Manny Ram John at that time. Eh? If you remember some years ago, but 5,000 people coming to pay $20. How much is that? I don't know how much. How much is that? 5,000 or 20? $100,000? You're spending 300, 400,000. If I do that four times a year, I'm dead in terms of my finances. So do I continue to spend this money? I get 5,000 and look good in the stadium, and then at the end of it, they have to come in front of the press and say, listen, guys, we did well this year, but here, what, next year, we're unable to continue the Pro League. Um, when we get some more money from the government, then we're going to do No, you have to, you have to understand the time, where you are in your product life cycle, where we in, how we need to build, what steps we need to take to, take to ensure that we keep the wheels rolling. Um, the, the clubs are at a, and the management are at a particular stage at this point. The country, in terms of the supporters, are at a particular stage. The communities are at a particular stage in terms of their understanding of sport. The leadership of the country is at a particular stage where they have a particular perception of sport and sport development and the importance of sport. So when you sit back and you take all these things into context and you put them in the right place and you understand where we're at, then you have to, uh, to then cautiously put things into the right perspective and then roll them out in the order that you see that that will be safe for you to, to ensure that the, the, the league remains sustainable and viable in the long run. Uh, and the reason I say that was, um, and you're right when you said the product, and the product is key. And when I talk about marketing, I really wasn't going as broad as you. I was directly to media. Back in the day, when we played football, at every game, after every game, you sure to have a big write-up about Wonder Boy or, or Gary Cummins or Warren Archibald. Big write-up and, 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 and they make you bigger than life, kind of. And then people get hooked on to that. We don't get it from the media. And I tell you what, I'm disappointed in the media because we were supposed to have a show with the media to ask them why they not support me, the pro league I, I, or other things. I, I do wanna, I wanna, I wanna, the media, I wanna say that the media supports the league. If you look at the coverage that the league gets, every day there's something on the pro league, basically in the papers. On the newspaper? It, long ago, 
There was nothing else to do, Steve. Long ago, it was either football or cricket. Growing up, and even in my time, on the, when, you, when you came home, there was no computer. There was one television station. There was one radio station or two radio stations. You had no computers, no game boy or whatever it is. So it was in the savannah, just so you have to, it was in the savannah to play, and it was football or cricket. Now, today, when you reach at home and you watch the television, you have a hundred channels, football all over the world, the best showing on television every day, every hour. You have so many other things to do. You have so many other activities for kids to do all over the country. So, so many other sports for, for the media to cover as well. So it is a challenging time. It is a different time, and it calls for different no, measures. You're making the it calls for the different media. No, no, I, I, this scenario, that's the scenario now. No, no, no. So no, even no. if, so even if we write about Steve David every day in the newspaper, you're still going to have challenges in terms of the support. I agree right? with you, but okay. And you said talk about television and help me narrate. Yeah. But if every I see in my player on television. That would get people excited, and we don't see that. I don't see. I don't hear anything of the professional league on, on television at all. I may see in the corner an article with something on professional league. I'm not getting enough. I don't. If you think you get enough, I don't think we get enough. What do you think? Because I have dealt with the media, even just because of my business on pushing. I've selected a few people in different media houses and stations or whatever to promote our content. But I also sometimes realize that I am not the only one doing this. So this guy now has a decision to make about 15 people who are contacting him to write something, horse racing, this, that, the other, and how he's going to get that to his editor to now decide what is the final print. Most times I'm lucky. There are very few times that I'm unlucky. And I personally take it as, you know, he did something wrong, but the reality is... So it was in someone else's hand. I would say that I believe the media doesn't believe in our product enough. Whether they're putting out enough content, that is debatable, but I believe them of themselves aren't of the belief that it's valid or it's relevant because I am seeing 10 articles on Spanish football and one on Pro League football. Now, yes, they may have Barcelona, they may have something on Real Madrid, but why do we have to put so much of the foreign content? Now, if the debate is going to sit down here and say, okay, we have horse racing in Trinidad, car racing, whatever, cool. By all means, it's a Trinidadian papers. Maybe the one biggest story in the world of sport could probably make it, or two. But I think there are times I have seen where it looked as though we just copied and pasted to fill up the page, when we could have probably used some sort of content that is more local to give some promotion. How many, and, and I always go back to simple things as, can we really ask a random person in the public to name 10 top players in the Pro League? Would they be able to name 10? If they can't name 10, something is still wrong. They may know the teams, but we need to start to braise the bar a little bit. Okay, how many people today know that the Pro League just moved from 9 to 10 clubs? They may have seen it, because that is the big highlight. Cool. So then give me the name of the club now. Then give me, on that said club, give me two players. Just two. I don't think they could answer just two. Respond. Again, <laughs> there are many ideas. There are many things to be done. I agree with you. There's, we could do a whole lot of things. A whole lot of marketing, the television-wise, 30-minute highlight program, live games on the television every day. Steve? But let's all let's of these things are in the pipeline, Steve. We have plans for these things, but as I keep saying, it costs money to do these things, and it has to be, it has to be a process. It's, it has to be uh, done at the right time. That is that is that we are comfortable with financially doing. All right, I'm agreeing that a lot more could be done in terms of the the the, oh. the publicity of the the teams. Um, and, and the games and so on, but I'm saying it's our responsibility. It's not, I'm not going to put the blame on the media. We need, as a league, to get to the stage where we can produce our own show with our media department, put it out there, pay for, get, get 
corporate Trinidad to sponsor it, to want to be involved in it because so many people are coming to the game. We have a brand, right. we have a market for the thing. Everybody, thousands coming in the communities to watch every week. So the businesses want to be a part of this thing. And we don't have to go run into them, but they come to it and we have, we're able to full up the, the boards around each field because TT Pro League is the in thing and it, everybody's following it and, and they can now utilize the, the TT Pro League as their ma marketing spend instead of the newspaper or instead of somewhere else. And we're going to get to that stage. We're going to get to be able to do that. We're going to be, we understand that that's where we want to reach and we are eager just as you. But again, prudent fiscal management has to be the order of the day at this point. Yeah. Dex is such mm -hmm. a nice guy, man. Mm -hmm. the media, yeah. this is Steve yeah. Davis. Yeah. And I'm saying to you, you have to help the Pro League, which you're not. You have to go out and, and watch the games and put articles and, and be on television and put things about the TT Pro League and do everything that you can to, to make your part, to do your part in supporting this football league. I do not think you do. And I challenge you to, <laughs> to do more. And I want to see more from you, the media. We got it. Dexter, you don't have to put money. You don't have to put money yeah. for that. No, this I, is free. I, I, disagree, I, disagree, I disagree with you. I'm saying this is our business. This is a business. Yeah. And we have to go to the people. It's just like a bank, for instance. Let's say First Citizens. First Citizens understands that they have to reach, they have a product, they have to reach out to people. So they have their ATM machines. They don't put it in the bush, yeah? somewhere down in, 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 in the country. No, they put it where? In the city, where it's accessible, where people can reach it, where it's, where, where in the, it's an area where people can go and get it, and, and, and they can have the traffic okay. so that it would be worth their while. And they place it, put it in the right place, and so on, and they have the marketing and so on behind it. And it, therefore, it becomes successful, but that's their products. We have a product. We are business. We have to just get up and get and start and... and take our time and learn the business and then understand what are the strategies that we have to do. And, and as we start to put the infrastructure in place, it's going to start to happen. It's going to happen. It's what going to time happen. Frame we have I say with it, as soon as we get those fields, that's a critical aspect. That's, that's where the, that's the, the whole, where you're going to start to be able to monetize your assets. When you have those fields in place in the community, you start to educate now our people about monetizing that, how you manage facilities and so on. And within five years, I say you're going to be able now to be self-sustainable, to, 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 to be able to uh, have, a, have your operations and so on be run from generating your, your revenues. So you are happy with what we're getting from the media right now? I'm not happy. I'm saying it's my response. I know where I'm at. I know what I have to do. Okay. I'm biding my time and I'm working with them and I'm trying to get the best out of them. Given their, I understand their resources, their challenges. I understand what the leaders of the media organization, how they think about sport. And I'm saying the guys who are covering sport, they're doing their best, they support the Pro League, they understand what the Pro League is about, but they have a challenge as well. That's why I said earlier, from the leadership of the country, look at the difference between Jamaica's Prime Minister before and Trinidad and Tobago Prime Ministers, I'm saying, and Obama, for instance, in the US. These people identify with particular sports in teams in, their, in the areas and so on and come out and understand the value of sport, talking about it openly, and go to sporting events and so on. And they tie sport into the whole, uh, the whole budget and so on, and, and the development of the country and, and the people. What? So I don't think we have that, that full comprehension yet, that understanding of the value of sport, the development well, of the youth and, 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 and um, the country. Hopefully this one, yeah, well, hopefully now we can have that, um, we can improve as we go along. I think you know? we have the Prime Minister who will do that Hopefully, for us. I, I, yeah. I, I, and I, I, I feel I, confident as well that my, our sports minister, Daryl Smith, I know him well, that he will, um, you know, we have put the, the things minister, in place and ensure that we, and we get the, the right, we get all the, um, we'll the requirements that, that we need. All right, um, at this point, we need to take another break. We'll be right back and, and then we will pick it up where we left off. Worldwide Safety Consultants Limited offers solutions to your immediate and future potential problem areas by providing you with a qualified team of safety consultants. Worldwide Safety Consultants Limited. 
building a reputation on quality and value since 1999. Located 23 Todd Street, San Fernando, Trinidad. Phone 868-657-1534 or 868-788-6955. Worldwide safety at yahoo.com. Okay, I just saw you playing all day and you look real good. Who are you? Well, you know, I'm in the center. I'm the best of all the points that I can see. Oh, really? You, you know any of the older players who play here? In well, I know Warren Achibald, Leroy Dillion. Stop, stop, stop. You, you know me? Hmm? Boy, I was the best striker, the best forward that this country ever seen. Oh, Griffith Kane. Boy, I'm Steve David Boy. Okay, welcome back, um, viewers. Uh, before the break, of course, we were talking about how I was saying how disappointed I was in, in, in the media. Um, Dexter was okay. Um, Dexter think the media is, is giving them all the support they need. I think we need to switch gears now a little bit, Dexter, and let's get into um, what's our plans and games that's coming up, future games that's coming up, and, and let's start today informing the public on what we have going and and the games coming up and all that. Well, let me just correct your perception yes. of what I was just saying. Okay. I'm saying that the league, it is the league's responsibility at the end of the day to get the information out and to do the marketing and so on, the requisite marketing. Okay. I never said that the media was doing enough. I'm saying I understand their position, I understand the scenario that they're involved in, and understand that the leadership that they're under and, and the whole um, competition for time and so on and space. I never said that I was happy with the coverage and that they can do more. I'm saying at the end of it, I understand that it is our responsibility. I stand corrected. Good. Right. All right. So, yes. So, <coughs> we, we, this year, what we've done is, um, in our marketing surveys, we understand now that we have to widen the, the, the target audience and to bring in the younger people to football. They have to, to pro league. They have to, to go up coming to pro league games. So we are saying, before we said we targeted the youth from 18 to 36 uh, through our Super Fridays, the, the lime, you know, and the, 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 the party type atmosphere. But we're saying now, when we look at it, we have to start now enticing families to come to see football. How do we do it? Friday night is difficult because you're talking about six and eight people going home at 10 and 11 in the night, and it's not conducive to, to family entertainment. So we're saying we sw we're switching now to our Fiesta Saturdays. This is what we call it. And Sunday afternoons, four and six doubleheaders where young people can come. You can bring your family. You have family entertainment. We have now bouncy castles, face painting, giveaways, competition for the kids at halftime. We have a, a, a partnership now with uh, the uh, literacy organization where we're now highlighting literacy and the importance of reading and so on and education for the young people as well. So all of these things will be included as part of our entertainment on the weekends. And um, so we're encouraging families now to come in and watch TT Pro League, grow up with TT Pro League and, and have the youngsters coming and seeing the, 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 our stars now. Now we can use this opportunity now to create stars now out of our players now and let these youngsters come now and getting to know the Marvin Olivers and, and, and so on and the Willis Plazas and so on of the TT Pro League. And that's a shift that we're having. Starting this Saturday, we have the first Citizens Cup quarterfinals. Dong and your hometown. Uh, point four thing is a great model for this, the, this new Pro League development. They have their home field, Mahika Oval. Um, from 4 p.m., we have the first of the doubleheader, um, Club Sando playing Rangers down there. Um, Angus Eve is now with the Rangers club this year, this season, and um, the Newbies playing against the Newbies. And then the big game at 6.30, Civic. we have Point Fortin Civic versus our W Connection. The w Connection. So we Speaking invite about people w to come down to Mahika on Saturday. Yeah, um, no, I think that is uh, Point Fortin as the model. Mm -hmm. exactly what we're looking for you know it's 
as I tell people, you compare other stadia in the large countries, the Arsenal, which is right there in the heart of the city, you could just walk by, you know, yeah. that is what Point Fortin has, you know. Everyone knows where the ground is, people could walk, some people could travel, who some of them in their house, they could look across. Yeah, so yeah. It, it, it has that community um, vibe that we're looking for. Mr. Skeen, I must applaud the Saturday and the Sunday initiatives. I think everyone has to form the league towards your country's style. You know, we can't follow what the States does. We can't follow what England does because you have to always remember your tradition of football, how it started in your oh. country, and then what we really surround ourselves around when we go to sporting events. And the reality is it is a family type event. Um, you know, the Friday is tough because it's after work line. You have yeah. this, that, the other to compete with. On a Saturday, you people usually carry the kids to sport in, you know, some sort of training or whatever. So having an activity happening is a good idea on Sunday. Point 14 W Connection, <laughs> that, is, that is a rivalry even before I could even talk about my thing with it because you have the past players, some going across there, vice versa, and the fact that some of the W Connection stalwarts came from Point 14. So it, it, it is the ideal thing. And then having the Angus Eve with a club sando preceding that game, I think that's something we even need to highlight, things like Angus Eve mm -hmm, mm -hmm. being that player on paper he has his statistics are very high so i think people should know more about him being a coach and then we have point 14 we have some of the legends coming from down there so i hope point 14 uses that as an initiative to promote some of the legends from the area you know especially as recently we even had a topic about a former player who was rejected by the hall of fame that that is even an opportunity to educate the persons whether from point 14 or outside about such players so it is something to look forward to, something that I would be present for, and I hope you know the result is in favor of the better team. The only say if it, it, it ain't broke, don't fix it. But we, we went beyond that and talk about continuous improvement. And back in the day, it used to be <laughs> football was Wednesday right. and Saturday. So actually, we're coming back a little bit to back in the day. So we, we just moved Wednesday and put it Sunday, Saturday, Sunday. But maybe we can adopt that same model, Wednesday. Well, we have, we have games on Tuesdays. We will be having mm -hmm. games on Tuesdays. Um, and that will be in the afternoon, the evening uh, type thing. But we, we want to focus. We're going to focus in our marketing spend on the weekend. Because we think that's where we're going to capture the youth. That's where we're going to capture the families coming out. And um, from there, we can build on that um, going mm -hmm. forward. It's, it is about as well improving how do we put, as they say, bottoms on seats? How, how do we improve our game day attendance? We are as well looking at um, improving game day activities. So when you bring people now to the venue, you must now ensure that you have the right atmosphere uh, and, and ensure that they enjoy themselves. It's entertainment at the end of the day. So you're competing with all the different forms of ent entertainment, so you have to make it worthwhile, you have to make it exciting, you have to make it enjoyable. I mean, and, and I think it's starting, it's bearing fruit, it, it has resonated because I was driving in traffic uh, yesterday and someone walked up to the car and said, Mr. Skeen, I'm going to shake your hand, but this Saturday thing, boy, I like that, I could bring my children out right. and watch football now. I couldn't bring them Friday night, so I said, yeah, well, we need hit in a note, yeah, yeah, so we, we need to just build on that and, and, and flesh it out and make sure everybody is involved all the teams, all the communities understand it, and that we start to roll out the, the marketing um, uh, initiatives and, and strategies. Um, and I right. just want to add something that could probably help. And mm -hmm. I know it's an idea <coughs> that you've had before yeah. thrown at you. If we target in the families, the kids is always what we have to target, right? Because once you get them on board, the parent have technically to has to go, yeah. right? So. You know, for those that have kids, you know if your kids tell you you want X, they want X, Y, Z, they're going to nag you about it. And for them to even have it, you have to make the decision. So I believe once we get into the brains or the environment of the kids between, and I'm going to probably make a stretch, maybe seven to about yeah. 15, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know, get into schools. Just simple things as maybe if you ask schools, just for little notice boards, just to put up something on a little history of a a legend and just that, okay, this team plays here or there, just so kids could go home to tell their parents, hey, a group of us, maybe 10 of them want to go to the game. So the parents, for sure, once the little group of five or 10 kids automatically means maybe both parents, maybe a sibling 
that's an automatic maybe 20 to 30 people going out to the game. So I think, you know, that is the, the right approach, having the bouncy castle. So there's entertainment happening, even yeah. if they are not 100% into what is happening on the field. They have other things they could partake in, like, you know, their weddings now today, they start putting little areas for the kids to play, so they don't uh -huh. interrupt what is happening there. So I think, you know, we're constantly building on that, and the 15, 13 to 15 years that the league is there, I know every year an idea comes, you know, and we try it. If it works, we stick with it. If it doesn't work, we change it. And that is what I think maybe this league could probably go 20 years you know, we're on 13 now. We probably have about three, four years before we probably get the right model, mm -hmm. and then mm -hmm. we're just going to see it. The numbers is going to be the last thing we're worrying about. We're probably going to worry about not accepting too many teams because we have so mm -hmm. much of our interest sure. into coming in, you know. And I think that is the right approach, going to the families. So we have the model, and the model is similar to what we have in Point 14. We have well, the, the the Point 14 has the model. Right. We need that now to be spread down to each club each. now. Yeah, we right. want everyone to have the similar model to point fourteen, have and have the, the stars of the former heroes like the Steve Davids and the Leroy De Leon involved Ability. in the project now, in the the, the club and the running of the club. Right. And from there then people can identify now with this thing and it, it will then start to to, um, to get the type of following and the fan base right. that is necessary to make the club a viable organization. Right, right. Well, we have the model. We just don't have the money. Um, <laughs> to, to, anybody want to sponsor the money will Jordan. come. The money will yeah, come when you continuously attract the type of crowds that the businesses see. Then you start to invite the business owners to your venue, and when they see what is available to them, then they will start to Depends put on. the money and invest into it. Maybe a little at the beginning, just that we did with some of our sponsors, and from there it starts to grow, like with the digital and so when they understand the vision of the organization and the people involved in it and how we're serious about the development of our people and this, this industry, then they start to buy into it and they, then they start to want to contribute to it as well and be a part of it. As long as you show them that you're interested in giving them value for their money and not just a hand, being a hand out and just to give money and then they walk away from it. No, they must be involved, they must receive the requisite value and, 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 and uh, return on investment from, the, from the, the, the sponsorship dollar. We, we come into the close. So, Nirad, we have five minutes. So I want, I, I've given you a minute to, to make a plea on behalf of the professional league to the public. And I'm going to take a minute to, and I'm going to give you Dexter three minutes to make that plea. <laughs> so you take your minute. Go. All right, what I, um, probably I, that, uh, Mr. Skeen might have taken the opportunity, but I would like to say that the Pro League has a website. All right, it's www.ttproleague.com. When I'm abroad, that is where I get all my information. So I could say that I am, it's a, probably a vice of mine, that I am online constantly getting updates on this website. So I, just as any other, we don't go to the New York Times to find out information about some sporting activity in the States. We go directly to NBA.com, NFL.com, or whatever. So the Pro League has to just get that out there more so everyone knows. You just go there and you get the information. From my part, I could promise that our company will continue to bring in some of the top players once the clubs need it. Most of the clubs I've worked with, if they want some of the top players, we work within their budget, we move around things to ensure that the player comes here, we will do our part. Because I believe once we continue to promote certain things, whether it be the local players or the foreigners coming in here, we could get these clubs to get the fans to support them. So that is my part, and we would take initiative on doing that. Dexter, the floor is yours. You can even take yeah, my minute. No, and in, in, yeah. in addition to what Narado was saying, we have as well uh, began to focus this year on social media. Um, we have included the Twitter and uh, Facebook as well into the, the whole mix of the, um, the website. And we have somebody specifically now looking at um, that interactive aspect of the social media and um, that's something added as well that people can look forward to this year. Um, so ttproleague.com um, is where they can get all the info, um, games, fixtures, articles, and so on, and learn a lot about TT Pro League. We're going to have videos as well of players. We're going to start creating stars as well. And we're going to have our players, short clips of them playing as well as inter being interviewed in their respective communities and people getting to know them who are the stars as well. So we're doing our bit as well to bring 
Pro League to the fans. Right. Um, this is exciting times. Um, the, the league is now kicking into full gear and um, we have the semi-final the following week and this, the final of the First Division's Cup the week after the end of October. So we are looking forward to a successful season and we ask people to continue to support local talent and to build this uh, football industry that we call the um, TT Pro League. You heard him, um, viewers, and please support the TT Pro League. Uh, to the players, they're begging for a star. If I, if I was in this time, <laughs> I know I would make sure I become a star because they're begging for one, so do it. Um, I, I want to thank Axe Television Network for giving us the opportunity to bring this to you, viewers. I want to thank the viewers for letting us into your homes and... Um, continue to view us every Monday night at 8 o'clock on Axe Television Network. Um, we do have a Facebook page. Please drop us a line. And we also have an email address. Feelerdreamstt at gmail.com Dexter, I want to thank you so much. And also you, Narada, for being on this show. I, I, I pleasure, really appreciate pleasure you Pleasure was mine. Um, huh? Always a pleasure to talk football and especially with a great like Right, Steve David. Yeah. Thank you so much yeah, for being yeah, here. Yeah, Thank yeah, you so yeah, much yeah. for being here. Um, the show is ended. Go in peace. I'll see you next time. Good night.